How's it young man? Manic Street Preachers. Hi guys. Hello there. Hello. How, are you, How are you? Not too bad, thank you. We've just uh, just got you. So. Just one hour ago, you Yeah, said. so we're just taking it all in. We brought the rain with us as well. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yes. And you just finished your British tour, did you say? Yeah, no, we, um, well, we've, we've been on tour in Britain for about a month. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a shock to our systems because we haven't done a tour like that for a long time. So kind of hopefully we'll be on form for tonight. Yeah, you have a gig here tonight. How do you feel about performing live? Um, Halstrad's always been really good. I first came here in 92 and um, didn't expect anyone to know any of our songs at all, but people did. And then we came back around This Is My Truth was really good and um, Nina from The Cardigans is joining us on stage tonight for the duet we've done with her. So cool. I guess it's a hometown gig for her. Yeah, how come How come you chose to work with Nina Persson and Cardigans? Um, the song was written as a duet and she was always the first choice. And uh, we sent her a how demo. Come? Because we're huge fans of the Cardigans. Yeah. I mean, I love her voice, I love her lyrics. I think her lyrics are really underrated, the last two albums especially. And um, just went, James went to New York and did it really quick, recorded her vocal in about three hours. Right. How did you approach her, like, with a suggestion? Did you? Um, well, I think we were kind of nervous when we initially had the, uh, had the idea of her singing on the track with us. Um, we kind of, it took us some time to get some courage to ask her. But uh, we just kind of called her up. Um, and, you know, remarkably, she said yes, which we were kind of shocked by. So we were kind of scared when we said, when she said yes, because we just kind of thought, well, no, we've got to get the track really good for her to sing on. So it was a kind of massive shock when she, we said yes. She probably felt the same way, though, for you. Um, I, I think she did. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. But kind of, um, uh, I think she still got... Equal respect. Yeah, yeah, but I think she still got some kind of international iconic status as a kind of really kind of recognizable like you know female lead singer in a band you know if you think about it there there are not that many really no. you know compared to like male singers so we were nervous and she said yes and they all ended up happily ever after and that is your love alone is not enough yeah tell, yeah. tell us about the video oh the video was really good to do um, nina came over and it's like a face-off it's like a rap face-off she's on one side and we're on the other and um, by the end of the video we come we become joined into one beautiful super group. <laughs> and it was really Did good. Did it take a long time to record it? No, it's the recording was really quick, the video was really quick. I think it's a good sign, you know, certainly is for this record that everything happened it was really instinctive and quick and uh, all our best records have been done fairly quickly. And that is from your latest album, Send Away the Tigers. Yes, indeed. And tell me about that album. It's just what we do best, really. We've looked at our past and we'd like to think it's it's a proper rock album, it's anthemic and it's intelligent and uh, it's our most successful album in about 10 years already so I think we're on the right track. I've heard you said it's your best album so far. All bands say that. <laughs> you know, the, your, your latest album is always your best but I think it's, it sums up a lot of all the best bits of Manic Street Preachers. Do all... you become better and better all the time? No. No, I think sometimes you go really bad. <laughs> but at the moment we're good. I think it's definitely you know in the top three Manix albums. I've heard you say it's a mix between Generation Terrorists and Everything Must Go. Yeah, that's what, what we looked at. Well, we just Generation Terrorists was really punky and really idealistic and really young, so we wanted to get a bit of that back. And Everything Must Go is just classic songwriting, it's uplifting. So we just wanted to try and mix mix the two together, really. Yeah. Which you know, when you're on your eighth album, you've got to try something. Yeah, I understand. You've been going on for 15 years, have you? Um, well, kind of, that's, that, a long, that's, the that's official, a long time. That's the kind of, uh, I suppose, that's how long we've been recording artists, I suppose, but we kind of formed in 1985. That's when we really started writing songs first. So, um, kind of... 22 like, years. 22 years, don't, in reality. You, you don't get enough. Um, I think, well, uh, the most sensible thing we ever did was we took a break before this album. Right. Um, and we just kind of like, we just want to kind of redefine what Manic Street Preachers meant to us. And, you and know, what does it mean to you? I think kind of it really kind of just gives you a chance to fuse creativity and idealism. It's right. as simple as that. And so some of fun as well. Yeah, I mean kind of, I, I think we've said this before, I think we're at our best when we have very highly, you know, we have intelligent high ideals mixed with some dumbness. All right. You know, so kind of, I think it's that kind of punk rock and rollness we try to mix with the punk has the ideal and the rock and roll is just dumb. And um, it took, we, we, took a, we took a year's break to realize that that's what we wanted to do again. And that's what it means to us. 
just to be entertaining, but also to have something underneath it which shows actually sometimes what you believe or think. Are you still as political as you used to be? Sarah's <laughs> good. I mean, we still sit, well, you know, we grew up in, in a very political era. I went to university and did politics, so. It's only while we're in, I think we don't perhaps try and force it down people's throats anymore, but we still believe in the same things and we still um, interested in the same things. It doesn't really matter to us what anyone else thinks anymore, but we just write about what we're excited by, really. Yeah. And if that's part, we're not particularly excited by nightclubs or falling in love. You know, we've done all that, so we don't really write songs about Are you in love, both of you? Yes, deeply. Yes. Right. And are your girlfriends or wives here with you on the tour? No, mine's going to be giving birth to my second kid in the next couple of weeks. Oh, so wow. I'll, I'll be rushing home as soon as I can. I understand that. Well, and I actually saw you here six years ago here at Hoofsbridge. How do you feel about performing at festivals? I mean, kind of, um, we've only got good memories about Hoofsbridge. So that kind of, yeah, that, that makes it hard. When you come back, because you right. want it to be as good and as uh, when you come back. The expectations um, are high. Yeah. Yeah. But kind of, sometimes I must admit, you know, in the past, we have not been compatible with the festival environment. <laughs> <Don't start. laughs> <It's like that. laughs> But um, I think as we've got older, we've, we've grown to love the outdoors and the kind of, and the, perhaps the community spirit at a festival. Is it, is it very different to perform at a festival than your own concert in It's very arena? different. I think the only way you can describe it is it's like being an actor and being on TV and then going to the theatre. It just feels completely different. Um, you feel a bit more vulnerable at a festival yeah. because it's not your audience, you haven't got your light show and you know, and you know the people out there are there to be converted rather than entertained. Sometimes. You might get bottled, yeah. <laughs> you might get attacked and abused. Yeah. Sometimes has, that, has that ever happened? Yes. Yes, plenty Tell of me. time. Tell oh, me. it's just too what's many it, What's the worst time? Get like a really I don't think it is bad, bad though. No, no, I like it. Do you uh, like to be I, attacked? Well, not attacked, but I think if the crowd is antagonistic, sometimes it brings the best out of you. Okay. I think if you're really up for it. I remember watching Marrow, Marilyn Manson in Australia once and he he was amazing, he just totally destroyed the audience and they hated him. But you know, he was so brilliant and so witty. Sometimes it's good, sometimes love is good, sometimes hate is good. Do you have like a really good concert that you never forget? For me it was the first time we played Red in, in 1992 and um, it's the first time we ever played Motorcycle Emptiness. And it was just, we really, for me, it the first time we felt like a kind of major rock band. Yeah. It was a glorious moment actually. And you got so many hit songs, so many good songs. Do you have a favourite one to put when you're performing? Um, I think Motorcycle Emness is... I don't think there's been, ever been a gig since 1992 where we've left it out. Oh, really? I think we've done it every time, so... Um, I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, kind of like, the, there are certain songs that kind of sum us up, and Motorcycle Emness is definitely one of them. Um, and I think Design for Life uh, is the other song that that really kind of like almost kind of gives us validity as a band because it's it's what we it was it kind of it, it is the sum and part of everything that we wanted to achieve you know so those two songs for me design for life most like emptiness the ones that I love any songs that you're sick of that you don't really want to yeah there yeah. are there are lots <laughs> of songs ones? that we're sick of but I kind of feel guilty to say which ones <laughs> they are really no um, you can do it you love us for it. Uh, you said called, you love us earlier in the dressing room. Uh, he's been drinking vodka. <laughs> um, this is song, at the moment I'm bored with playing some songs like You Love Us. Um, I mean there was a song that we covered which was kind of an international hit called Suicide is Painless. 